All right, so today we'll be talking about the RAF nucleus. It is located in the midbrain, the pons and the medulla. So let's write that down, location, midbrain, the pons and medulla. There is around 235,000 neurons, which are split into serotonergic, substance P, and catecholamine. The serotonergic are the largest part. 165,000 plus or minus 34,000. The substance P, around 74,000 plus or minus 17,000. And the catecholamine, 5,600, plus or minus 3,400. All right. And The blood supply is the basilar artery, and the anterior artery So the naming of these uh, nuclei uh, can be a little bit complicated. The um, you'll sometimes see them referred to as uh, cell. Oh, one second. Sometimes referred to as cell groups, and these cell groups will be B1 through 9. Uh, you typically see it uh, grouped into two groups. Where you have a rostral and caudal, caudal group. And for rostral and caudal, just real quickly, the uh, if we draw a very bad human head, the rostral in that direction, whereas the caudal is in this direction. Uh, and we'll have the brain right here, obviously, and the brain stem right here. And so this is the area we're talking about. All right. Let's just erase this real quick. And so for these rostral and caudal groups, uh, we have uh, very commonly you'll see the dorsal uh, ref nucleus and median ref nucleus. But you also might see uh, nucleus linearis, or the caudal linear nucleus, or the nucleus raf pontis, uh, several other names that will be listed, um, but sometimes they'll be just grouped with the dorsal raf or the median raf. So it's a bit uh, complicated depending on which study you're citing. 
for the caudal group, um, it's a little bit more clean. Uh, it's very common that uh, it'll be just talked about as the nucleus uh, Raph Magnus. Uh, nucleus Raph Pallidus and the Nucleus Raph Obscurus. And so if we were to use these cell groups, uh, you'll usually see it like this, where uh, dorsal will be B6 uh, and B7. Oh my god, my writing is terrible right now. Uh, B5 and B8. I hope you can read that fine. Um, Magnus is B3. Pallidus, B2. And Obscurus, B1. That's a rough mapping of the two against each other. All right, and let's now talk, oh, I did not mean to do that. Now let's talk about the last part, which is the afferent and the efferent connections. So for efferent, let's talk about efferent connections right now. For efferent connections, we'll have the uh, dorsal and median groups and this these will both be in this rostral grouping that will be projecting to the cerebral cortex Neostriatum, the amygdala, the substantia nigra, the pons, the hippocampus, the entorhinal cortex, and the lucus ceruleus. So these will be from the dorsal and from the median we'll have the ventral tegmental area, the hypothalamus, uh, the thalamus, the hippocampus, and the cerebral cortex. Now Roughly summarized, these are a lot of areas. Um, and so one might say that all of these areas could be best summarized by projections to the forebrain. I'll show you an image after um, I talk about these efferent and afferent connections just to make everything come together. But for now, uh, you can try and picture this in your mind. Um, and then for the caudal group, which if you remember is the Raph Magnus, the Raph Pallidus, and the Raph Obscurus, we have a spinal cord, projections to the spinal cord, to the medulla, and to the cerebellum. So roughly summarized in the same way, this would be the brainstem and spinal cord. So if you'll notice, these rostral uh, nuclei, which are located more, uh, located higher on the brainstem, are all projecting to the forebrain. They're projecting up and out whereas the caudal groups are projecting down into the body uh, towards the spinal cord uh, and uh, to other brainstem areas. 
All right, so that describes the afferent connections roughly. And let's quickly talk about what is known of the afferent connections. So for, um, for the afferent connections, it's, um, um, it's not particularly known within human studies uh, exactly which afferent connections uh, go to specific areas. However, there have been track tracing animal studies, and what has been uh, found is that for the rostral group, so for the rostral group, we'll have afferent connections from the ventral tegmental area, the lateral, Habernula, the interpeduncular, that's a tough one, nucleus, and the cingulate cortex. So we'll just put that in CC. Um, <clears throat> and for the caudal group, oh, caudal group, we have the the amygdala, the hypothalamus, the dorsolateral periaqueductal gray matter, and the bed nucleus of the street terminals. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll notice I've talked about this and this, uh, and uh, this would these are regions related to anxiety, which are a bit interesting. Um, and also hypothalamus because HPA axis. Um, uh, but we'll talk a bit more about that in the uh, physiology video that I'll be doing um, about possible studies on there. So real quickly, just before we end, I want to show a uh, image just to try and uh, firm up where this location is and what these connections look like. So real quick, uh, let me see. Oh, All right, so real quick, the, I think this is the correct image. Oh, it's very small. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger. All right, so this gives you a bit of an idea of what these nuclei look like, and you can see how these blue ones project up and out to the forebrain, and these uh, bottom red ones uh, representing the caudal grouping projecting down to the brainstem and out to the body. All right, thank you very much.